a lot of liberal news reporters came out and really slammed Matt Taibbi, uh, which really was really shocking. What was your response to that? Um, well, I think uh, those people should be looking in the mirror and wondering why they were deceptive. Uh, why did they deceive the American public? And, and instead of trying to redirect blame to Matt Taibbi, they seem to be accepting some responsibility themselves for not being truthful to the American public. Elon Musk calling out bias in the media as he exposes Twitter's history of censorship. Outkick founder Clay Travis pointing out, quote, there is not one single article about Elon Musk or the Twitter email released last night on the New York Times app this morning, to which Elon Musk replied, that's because the New York Times has become, for all intents and purposes, an unregistered lobbying firm for far left politicians. Got that right. Here to react, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, great to see you. Your response overall on how what Elon has exposed and how the media has reacted. I feel like I'm seeing the same movie over and over again, Pete. Before the presidential election, October of 2020, the Hunter Biden laptop story was dismissed. It was mocked. If you sh even thought that it was a real story, your account got locked on Twitter and you were called a conspiracy theorist. Yep. And now here we are two years later and everything in that laptop, all those emails have been verified. So you would think journalists would be like, oh, let's not do this again. And sure enough, Elon Musk puts out all these new documents through Matt Taibbi, a real journalist. And what are we seeing from these same journalists? Mockery or it's dismissed or it's ignored. Washington Post, for example, this morning has a story on the email dump by Elon Musk. And all they do is just say, there's no there there. This is no big deal. No, this is one of the most egregious, most most, what, what do I want to say here? Uh, biggest violation of power by an industry yeah. in big tech in its history in what they did with this story. It became Pyongyang in the USA. Elon Musk said, I believe there was election interference based on what Twitter did. Yes. If you played the reversal of that, of any, uh, any media company or social media company, it would be a, what, four-column byline, maybe five Easily. on the New York Times? Easily. Social media giant exposes election interference. Instead, I mean, here's, here's the media coverage. We did it earlier. Let's do it again. Yeah. CBS, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, zero minutes. CNN, 10, good for them. Uh, this, because it's about the collusion, too, between so big tech and the government, which knew it wasn't a Russian hack, right. but told them it was to justify it. Here's the thing. Let's say this laptop didn't belong to Hunter Biden, but to Donald Trump Jr. or to Eric Trump. And you had all these emails that are completely and totally verified. And it talks about the big guy getting 10 percent of kickbacks yeah. from places like Ukraine, which is in the news a lot lately, getting a lot of money from the U.S. and China, our and biggest Russia. adversary, <laughs> and Russia for that matter. Then, therefore, you would have a sitting president who is compromised by the likes of China, who unleashed something called COVID on the world, which killed millions of people and crippled economies. I think journalists would care if that were the case. Ah, so instead, we run breathlessly with a fake compromised president with the Russian collusion story, which is what the press did. They Right. ran with that and made up out of whole cloth. But they continue to this day to ignore real potential compromised president, yeah. even though it's right in front of them. And, and think about when, when people talked about Russia collusion and that election being stolen in 2016. Yeah. You're not supposed to say it's stolen, right? You can't say that in any way, shape, or form. But in 2016, two-thirds of Democratic voters believed that the Russians actually got into voting machines and changed <laughs> vote totals, right? That's how much of an impact media media coverage on that particular story, which wasn't a story, had. And now we have a real story, verified emails, and you have a media saying, you got to be kidding me, while going after Matt Taibbi, by the way, simply for being the one who put it out. Yeah. Well, Elon after Musk. listening to Elon Musk last night, it's kind of like Fox, the Fox News Channel. Before there was the Fox News Channel, there was no other part of the conversation. Yeah. And today it's the highest rated network in the country. Uh, you, you could see that same kind of renaissance in Twitter. People feel like, hey, I've got a real conversation here and an alternative as opposed to being blocked and suppressed everywhere else. Well, that's exactly right. And, and you see all these other Twitter rivals now popping up that, that many liberals are going to saying this is the hot new place. No, nobody likes an echo chamber. And that's why people love Twitter so much because of the engagement from both sides. Yeah. And, and you're right about Fox. You know, when Fox came about, it found its niche audience half the country, yes. right? <laughs> they were very, very hungry for something else besides what they were True. being spoon-fed every day. Because hoping those other media organizations change was not going to happen. Don't change those socks, by the way. I Boy, those Vikings, are tremendous. Vikings, Jets today, every yeah. single 
audio and camera tech in this studio is for the Jets. That's right. I know that, but the Vikes are going to do it today. All right. Joe. Save the tape. See. All right. And producers, everybody. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.